Understand what you're sitting up under. You ain't sitting up under a renegade. You sit up under someone that has a Moses and been taught by Moses. Had a great model, my God, to pattern my God, my life, and my ministry that God has blessed me with after us. Uh, I'm not just a former gangster that decided to be a pastor. I've been called to the office of a pastor. Oh, yes, that's too heavy for most of them because they don't understand that verbiage. It's different from being wanting to and being called to one year. That's why it's so serious. Just Judges chapter 6, start at verse number 11. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophir, which belongs to Joash, the clan of Ebenezer, Ebenezer, I don't know. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, a mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, See, we saying the same thing. Watch this. Why has all this happened to us? <laughs> if God be for me, then why am I going through all this? If God is on my side, why do I have to experience this? See, you got to learn how to put yourself in the scriptures. These are not just stories. It's life application. Many of us don't read it because we say we don't understand it. But if you put yourself in the story, because we saying the same thing. If the Lord is with me, we saying, God, why then? So much is going on. See, it makes it personal. Then you want to read a little bit farther. Then you want to get a better understanding. Because now you see yourself in the exact same story that you're reading about. I just taught you and gave you some applications to go up the mountain a little higher. He said, sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are, still, where are all the miracles that our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Verse 15 says, But the Lord... Capital L, Sharon. Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I am the least. Perception has everything to do with your calling. I am the least. I am the least. I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. Affirmation right there. And assurance. And you will destroy the Midianites as if, my God, you were fighting against one man. That still wasn't good enough. Look at verse 17. Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign <laughs> to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not finna criticize Gideon because he needed some more affirmation. I need some too, dirty. Trust me, man of God. God, are you sure you told me to... <laughs> was comfortable are you sure uh, father God I thank you for the few minutes bless the people thank you father God for all that you're saying and all that you're doing bless all those that are listening by way of YouTube father God and Facebook and all those areas out there on social media speak to your people draw save somebody's soul sitting on their couch right now bring deliverance and break yokes to someone out there Father God that may be walking down the street on their way to do something but it's tapped into uh, going off of Christ live Lord and they're on their way shift them redirect their steps break chains and break yokes off of all of us set someone free save somebody's soul we thank you for strategic timings and strategic moments this is another one of those opportunities that you allowed us to have business and do business inside the embassy of your kingdom in Jesus name we pray Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For many that was not here last Sunday, I started out uh, uh, laying this foundation in the ministry. And, and so if you can go to our web page, uh, also subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, uh, you can be able to catch up with us uh, as we go to part two of strategic timing. 
my God, I'm so excited. I sought God for a different direction, but he, let, he kept me right here so that I could finish this. Because how many know that you have strategic timings? You have strategic moments in God. And it's so critical that you don't miss your strategic moment, your strategic time in God. Let me say that again as you get set him, settled. You have strategic moments. You have strategic times. Can I help you understand something? God is not on your time. So we can't miss what God has for us, church. You cannot miss what God has for you, church. In Judges, in Judges 6, Israel is living under oppression from the enemies of the Midianites. And then a young man called Gideon is hiding in the enemy's, my God, wine press, threshing wheat. So I thank God that I get another week to add to and study out, my God, this message. Hmm. This was both difficult, what Gideon was dealing with, and humiliating, church, because wheat was threshed in open space. Typically on a hilltop so that the breeze, my God, could blow away the chaff. Even though the man of God was hiding out in a wine press, he was at the bottom when he should have been at the top. He should have been out in the opening, Minister Tanya, so that the wind can blow away that what don't need to be there. But instead, he was in, my God, a vicinity where he had no air, no outflow. And so he could imagine he had to work extra hard. Are you working extra harder? Because you are out of position. Remember, my God, he was hiding out because of oppression, depression. Life has a way of causing us to hide out. Life has a way of getting us out of position. Are you with me so far? When the angel calls Gideon, a mighty hero, a mighty man of valor, he is calling him by his, as I taught y'all last Sunday, God-given identi God identity. In the Bible, my God, a given name, as I told you, is often equal with a God-ordained identity and destiny. The name Gideon means cut her down or destroyer. And Gideon is destitute to be a leader who, with God's help, overthrows Israel's powerful army. Let me give you a note for those that's taking note. Often the greatest heroes appear in the midst of the worst chaos and confusion. Often, the greatest heroes, let me change the verbiage, pops on the scene in the midst of chaos and confusion. Somebody get fired on your job and you're the next man up. Dirty dies on the football team, one of your star running back get hurt and the one that's been on the sideline is the next man up. Are you the next woman up? Are you the next man up? Sometimes life has a way of pushing you into leadership, pushing you out of your comfort zone. Chaos and confusion has a way of dis helping you and I, I and you discover what's on the inside of you. <sighs> let me say, let me go over here. Somebody saying amen, Minister Mel. Uh, uh, chaos and confusion, that what you're about to lose your mind about is the very weapon and the tool that God is using to bring exposure to that leader that's on the inside of you. So that's what happened to Gideon. He was dealing with oppression. Hiding out, out of God's will and out of God's purpose, per se. Because truth be told, when you understand the story, he really wasn't out of God's will, Pastor Ted. He was really in God's will. See, what you're thinking is out of God's will is really in God's will. See, you're thinking that God can't use you because you, you ain't squeaky clean. Uh, you, you think God can't find you uh, because you didn't remove yourself from where you're supposed to be. How many know that God know where you at? Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, God know where you at? God know where you at. Oh, my God. So, so some of you are trying to isolate and some of you are trying to hide out. My God. But how many know that God is omni? Omnipresent. <laughs> that he's everywhere. He's all-knowing. Come on. You can't miss God while you're running. Why are you trying to? James Brown. Why are you trying to get out of his presence? Where can you go and he not be there? What can you hide and he not know you're there? Matter of fact, the cave that you're going to, he's already there before you get there. How many know that he already cre he cre he created the cave, so he knew you was going to the cave anyway. So he was already there before you got to the cave. Even before you thought about the cave, he had already knew you was going to be right there, so he had already made provision for you right there. He had already made provision for Gideon, and he's going to send an angel right there because he's hiding out. 
But I want us not to miss the strategic time and the strategic moment. As you read the scripture, the Bible says in Judges 6, 1, the Lord, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. Disobedience, worshiping idols. I preached a message two, four weeks ago, I believe, at 34, 34, and I asked, who's on the throne next to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? It should only be those three, the Trinity. What's on the throne? What idols are on the throne? So the Midianites, my God, tormented the Israelites because the Israelites began to worship other idols. They chose to disobey God. What am I trying to say? Even in the midst of our disobedience, our disobedience, and we have left our positions, have left our post, God's going to find you today. You never was lost to God. You may have been lost to somebody else, but you never was lost to God. Are y'all with me so far? And so I talked about point number one, and I mentioned last week, my God, that, uh, that uh, let me get it, that, uh, that God initiates our identity and our destiny. And I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going right over to point number two, which is I'm very, very excited about. So point number two, God has a way of turning our weaknesses into strengths. That's what he did with the man of God. As I told y'all last week, as I said, I'm going to redo this, my God, just so you can see. Only got two points, so I'm taking my time. He was down here working extra hard. I don't want to work hard. I'm tired of working hard. Tired. Ain't you tired, Minister Teddy? Who, my God. Somebody need to understand there's a business inside you. When you discover your identity, when you start looking within, you'll discover that God created you to work for yourself instead of work for somebody else. And so that what used to come easy. Now the grace is lifting because God is trying to push you up out of your familiar to your next. And so, my God, the man of God was down here working hard, working hard. And he was down there hiding. Instead of Gideon being in faith, Gideon was in fear. Write that down. Are you in fear instead of faith this morning or this afternoon? Are you in fear or are you in faith right now? Do the circumstances and situations, my God, that are facing you and I, uh, are you seeing them as a mountain to climb or are you seeing them as a place to hide from? Remember, I teach y'all, whatever you don't confront won't change. There's certain things you can't run from, you can't hide from. You have to deal with head on. Are y'all with me so far? So I want you to think about this. God is ready to turn all of our weaknesses into strengths. That very thing that people is laughing at you about, saying, girl, you ain't going to make it. You should. Moses. Moses stutters. Moses tried to come up with all type of Christian's excuses about him. I can't speak. And he said, don't worry about it. I got you. I got somebody called, who is it, Aaron? To help you speak for you. See, see, we steady giving God all of our can't. I'm not disqualified. I'm not whatever. God is saying, I got something for that. You can't give God something, my God, because he created you. So he knows what's in you. So how are you going to give God your excuses when he already got an answer to your excuse? Quit giving God your excuses and say, God, why, instead of saying, why me, God, say, use me. Yeah. And all of my shortcomings and all of my failures, God, use me. And so as we finish up talking about strategic timing, God came to Gideon at a strategic time when he was in fear and not in faith, when he was not operating in his identity. Remember, my God, he was a cutter down, my God. He was a mover and shaker. Really, my God, Gideon was a bold leader. He became a bold leader, but he wasn't operating like that. So God began to come to him in his weakness. In 1 Corinthians, write this down, chapter 1, 26 through 27. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes are powerful, are wealthy, when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world consider foolish, y'all, in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chooses things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. What the Spirit of God is saying is, let people count you out. 
Let people look at you as you disqualified because you made mistakes. You got a failure, my God. Oh, my God, you got a pass. Well, who don't got a pass? But God tells you right there, think about what you was when I called you. I'm going to say that right there. What was you doing when God called you? What type of mindset did you have when God called you? What was you struggling with? What habits, what addictions, my God? Who and what was you doing, my God, when God called you? But look now. It's okay to look back. Look back, my God, and think about, and think about what it was when God called you. Mm, mm, mm. Look what God did. God sees things in us that we cannot see. Write that down. God sees things in us that we cannot see. I was telling uh, Brother Derek in my meeting this morning, I said, I don't know how many times for those that, that go up here in Tulsa that I drove past this church going to Skateland Tulsa. How many of y'all remember I mean, Skateland? How, okay, how many of y'all remember? Every Sunday night, we on our, come on, Tasha. We on our way to uh, get our Gary shows on. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You know, going, I didn't drove past this church a million times yeah, yeah. on my way to Skateland on Sunday night. Not knowing that God had a purpose and a destiny for me many, 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 many years later to own something that I drove past. I can't get nobody to see. I'm trying to help the church, my God. Oh, my God, quit counting yourself out. And so think about what you was when God called you. I know what I was doing, and I know where I was at. I was in that place, my God. Uh, he, it was a wine press for him, but mine was a six-by-nine prison cell. And God started to work right there. So what you see is chaos. I thought it was chaos, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me was going there because then God showed me down and, get, and got my attention and the rest of it is history. So the very thing you rejecting, the, thing, the very thing you kicking against, my God, is the very tool, weapon, a strategic thing that God is trying to use, my God, to execute his will in your life. Yes. So quit bucking and submit and surrender. You might not understand the chaos. You might not understand the pain, my God, but God's going to work it out for the good. Yes. Remember, God, my God, specializes in turning your weakness into strengths. Give God your weakness and let him become, make it strong for the kingdom. Oh, my God. The very thing that I, I used to be weak to, I now use to help other men come out of. Yeah. The very thing that used to be on top of me now, my God, I use it to help, my God, other people get on top of it instead of it being on top of them. What am I trying to say? The very thing that you are disqualifying yourself about is the very tool that God wants to use, my God, so he can advance his kingdom through it. Let God turn your weaknesses into strengths. You needed to go through it because it needed to become a testimony. Your weaknesses ain't nothing but a testimony when God deliver you from it. When God turn it around, strategic time and strategic moment, when you allow God to encounter that weakness, my God, he going to be, uh, he going to shift it. He going to shift it if you just give it to him. If you got a weakness, give it to him and let him shift it. That's why we can say what the enemy meant for bad, God will turn it around for good. Quit disqualifying yourself behind our shortcomings. Are you with me? What was you? I'm going to do that again. What was you? What was you? And then what are you right now? What was? Because it should be a was. Because it it's, it's a was on mine. But what are you right now? Uh, I'm trying to help those that has been delivered just to remind you. And those that are still on their way to deliverance. I'm trying to remind you that don't let their weakness disqualify you. Give it to God and let God turn it into his strength. I'm trying to build you. I'm trying to take a different type of people up the mountain. Quit disqualifying yourself. When Gideon, my God, when God calls Gideon, the young man does not comprehend his destiny or his identity. In fact, he is currently behaving, my God, the very opposite. Don't it seem like when you pray, uh, it seems like it gets worse than it did better? Uh, is it just me and first lady that pray for us? And it seems like the one you get. Uh, uh, son, what is you? You got everything. Why? Same thing my mama say, Jude, you got everything. Why are you doing what you do? Why? John picked me up one time. He was crying. He said, Juju, I don't understand why you living the way you living. You don't even have to live like you living. What is you doing? He couldn't understand. I was behaving opposite of who I am today. <laughs> are you behaving? I'm trying to encourage you. Opposite? Because you don't know who I see. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that God had a destiny. I'm trying to pick you up, church, my God. Are you operating, my God, different than who you really are? But once you discover who you are, then your mind should shift, your focus should shift, your self-esteem will go up, your self-confidence will go up. You will begin to operate, my God, like a masterpiece that I taught you last week you are. And Gideon was hiding out. 
out of fear because they, Gideon didn't know who he was. So God came to Gideon at a strategic time, baby, in a strategic moment and spoke to his identity. God, right now, is speaking to somebody's identity. Because I told you in the spirit realm last week that you was a masterpiece, but you still don't believe it. That, that's for Pastor Madeline. That's for Pastor Michelle. That's for Pastor Michelle. Yeah, yeah. But what about you? You are, yeah. on Crow with Dirty said, you a masterpiece. Yeah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Son, son, do you understand, little Benny? You are a masterpiece. You ain't acting like it, but you are. I wasn't acting like it, but look at me today, giving God the glory. Yeah. So what am I trying to say? Stay encouraged, stay encouraged. See, I'm not to build people. I'm a builder of people. Yeah. See, yeah. if I stay yeah. encouraged, yeah. Yeah. because God is trying to speak to your identity. Yes. In spite of, he's speaking to your identity. Because when you connect, my God, to how God see you, you function different. You operate different. You function completely different when you operate in your God-given identity. And so, my God, when you begin to function and operate in your God-given identity, my God, then you begin to allow God to change your weaknesses into strengths. Do anybody other than me got some weaknesses that God need to turn to strengths? Let me see your hand. See, see, this by the showing of your hands, you have just decreed and declared, my God, that this message is tailor-made just for me. Because many of you, again, I'm redundant, is disqualifying yourself because of your weaknesses. You made a mistake last night. You talked to somebody you shouldn't have talked to. You went somewhere you shouldn't have went to. You done something you shouldn't have done. So now you just totally just, ah, uh -huh, I just ain't worth nothing. You're acting like, you're acting like, you're not acting like, thank you, Holy Ghost, you're not acting like who you are. But that's okay for right now. Stay with me. For right now. Don't miss your strategic timing. Yeah. Don't miss your strategic moment. Because God will send an angel. Yeah. God will send somebody who don't look like you. Yes. I told you they're walking up and down the street. There is some of them that's walking up and down the street right now that's going to walk up off in there and they're going to prophesy and proclaim the kingdom of God inside this church. You watch what I tell you. Watch out there. And so therefore, my God, God is, is God trying to send a strategic angel to your situation? Are you in the wine press at the bottom right now? Do you feel like that in your emotions? Do you feel like that in your mind? Is your addiction speaking louder than your identity? Addiction is not just drugs and alcohol. Is your low self-esteem hindering you? Have you? Will you this afternoon allow God to turn your weakness into a major strength? Let me tell you what that means. A strength to torment the devil. The very thing that the enemy tormented me with, I'm tormenting him with. The very thing that the enemy, that I allowed the enemy to use to torment me, Christian, God is now tormenting the enemy by it. He hate to see somebody that was strung out delivered because of the lifestyle. He hate to see somebody that was strung out delivered because of the lifestyle. Let God turn your weakness into a strength so you can use it against Satan. Ain't you tired of Satan defeating you? Don't you want to get some get back? Ain't you ready to knock him upside his head instead of him knocking you? See, I want me to use all them seminary words and all that, but then yet you ain't getting transformed by them. And I ain't got nothing against it. It is what it is. Sometimes you begin to operate the opposite. Gideon was operating the very opposite of who he was. And I understand why, because he didn't know who he was. That's why it's so critical for you to know who you are. That's why it's so critical for, for you to discover who you are. And know who you are. Are you with me so far? Come on, somebody. Mm. He feels like, my God, the smallest and least significant. But God is calling him to be a leader. In the Bible, those who God used powerfully, my God, usually had a history of weaknesses or failure. In the Bible, think about the characters that we read about. Think about the great apostles, the great people, my God. Moses started. Come on. Come on, are you with me? Gideon was called a man of fearless courage. When he was yet hiding from the men's night, he was a, called a man of fearless courage, even though he was hiding. Abraham was called the father of many nations when he had no children. Sarah, come on, Sarah, was called a noble woman even while she mocked the Lord. Here go my favorite one. Peter was called the rock even though he constantly messed up. God said, you the rock. Constantly messed up. And he always was in trouble, like me. Peter, why you cut that man's ear off? Peter, even if I got to die with you, Peter, come on, son. I know you got a lot of zeal, but you got to become more disciplined because you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crow. P P Peter always got in trouble. Uh, Peter, God told Peter, 
Why are you worried about this? This curve about, don't worry about that. Worry about your own business. Yeah. Who gonna sit at the right hand? He said, see, now you worry about all, see, you worry about stuff. Just worry about what I told you to do, yeah. Peter. Yeah. I'm using this because I want y'all to see that Peter, my God, was a person like you and I. Yeah. And God spoke to us, I did, and he said, you're a rock in the midst of all your failures and all your mistakes. Upon you, Peter, the very person that denied him three times, the very person, my God, that he was always in trouble. God is always getting on Peter because Peter, you know what I'm saying, was brash. He was loud like me. Uh, he had an attitude. He was very, he'd get angry real quick. If you do do the study on the man of God, he was a mm, Lord have mercy. I'm growing. I promise you I'm growing. Oh, my God. But at the end of the day, God spoke to us out there and he said, you the rock. I'm going to build my church on you and all your mistakes and all your failures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. God spoke to his identity. My God. God, God, when God spoke to Peter and said, uh, uh, you the rock upon you, I'm going to build my church, he was, that, was just, that was just a t strategic timing. That was a strategic moment that he spoke to his identity. Uh, the day of Pentecost when my God, when the Spirit of God fell and they got full of the Holy Ghost, you never see Peter acting up. Peter would end up going hard for the New Testament church. But he had to get in position. He had to be endued with power. He had to begin to operate and see himself the way God sees himself. You need to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. And the only way you're going to get personal revelation of how God sees you is you got to open up that Bible. Yeah. Many of you are trying to get something. You're trying to let T.D. Jakes, you're trying to let Joyce Meyer, uh, Stephen Furrick, and all, 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 all. you're trying to let all these people tell you who you are. You need to find out who you yeah. are through yeah. God. God is your source. A preacher on TV is not your source. Pastor people is not your source. God is your source. I cannot tell you who you are. God can show me things about your character, but I can't tell you who you are. God has to tell you who you are. And then he'll begin to show me who you are after he tell you who you are. Ooh. Good teaching. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah. One of the greatest hindrances to success is past success. One of the greatest hindrances to success is past success. Many of you feel like you have arrived, but there's so much more in you. There's so much more that God has called you to do. Don't settle. Don't let anybody tell you, you ought to be grateful. You just act, you just so greedy. No, 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 I just want more of what God has called me to do. Because the God gives you grace in seasons. See what I'm trying to say? And that what used to come easy is no longer easy, so it's time to move on to something greater. Don't just settle. Strive for greater. Look at your neighbor and say, strive to be great. Strive to be great. Ooh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Good word. Somebody give God a hand again. Mm. I want you to think about where you've been hurt at and where you've been wronged at. Because remember, we're talking about God would turn strength, weaknesses into strength. Think about right now where you're hurting at. Think about what you feel, because some of us feel like we've been wrong, but really we was the problem that caused the wrong. But we, we need somebody to blame it on. So the quicker you say, you know what, I got to own up and accept my part in this too. Then you can heal. If you're always blaming somebody else for the wrong, then you'll never be able to heal. What is your part? That's called being honest with yourself. As long as you're not honest with yourself, God can't hear you. Y'all better catch me. If you're not honest with yourself, God can't hear you. You're already healed. Because of what he did on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. But in order for you to accept, my God, his healing, you got to be honest with yourself. Because if you're not honest with yourself, you're going to always see it as somebody else's problem. Somebody else caused this. But what did you cause? What role did you play? That's critical because it's going to help you get healed. Where are you hurting at? What do you feel wronged at? That's a weakness that God wants to turn into a strength. The very area where you're hurting at, the very area where you are wrong at, or where somebody has wronged you at, is the very area, if you give it to God today, he wants to heal. The very attitude, he wants to heal. The heart, and the pain and the emotions, he wants to heal. The discomfort and the confusion in the mind, he wants to heal. But you got to give it to him. Please, church, listen to me. My God, I'm almost through. One of the things I don't ever want to see happen, as long as I'm a pastor of this church, is that people come into the house of the Lord, and God never, you never, or I never allow God to change your life. You have to position yourself for God to do business in your life. You got to tell yourself, God, who am I? Lord, do what you will in my life. 
it is dangerous because I love you so much. It's dangerous. And it would grieve me to know what I know. And yet you ain't doing what it takes to get free. When God has already paid the price for you to be free, all you got to do is accept your freedom and then make a decision. It's hard. It's hard because you have no accountability. It's hard because you need a yes down in your soul. It's hard because your flesh don't want to stop, but your spirit is ready to come out. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, you got to get around people, my God, that is successful or free from the very thing that you're still stuck in. Because when you get around somebody that's free from what you're stuck in, they can take you by the hand and drag you. I walk with you. I pray you. I fast for you out of your situation. But if you stay in hiding in the wine press and you let people know what you want them to know instead of what they really need to know, they can't help you. He turns weaknesses into strengths. That's powerful. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. With God's help, my God, you will overcome those weaknesses. And they will become points of strength. Points of strength. They will become areas in which you minister to others. What have you been through and what are you going through? That if you submit... God will begin to turn it around to use against the enemy and the kingdom of darkness. So the very things that got you all like this, y'all look at me. Poor me. Nobody love me. I ain't going to never get no better. I ain't gonna... You're steady and you forget that you're a master of peace. You just learned that God wants to use your weaknesses and turn them around for strength. What is on top of you that God wants to use? If you know, write it down. If you know something that's on top of you, write it down. Please don't forget. Come on, I'm going to say loud right there. What weakness do you and I have that God wants to use for his strength? Will you allow God to use it? Would you allow God to use your weakness to torment the devil? I am being redundant because I want you to come up to another level and see the very thing that you're struggling with if you give it to God God's gonna use it to torment the devil some of you don't believe that if God is using any form of your former life my God to advance his kingdom can you stand on your feet and give God some glory please if God has used your life in any way somebody give God some glory man Okay. I know pastor get a little bit excited and hyped and passionate, but that's not where I'm at. I want you to get some principles to move forward. Today, weaknesses become strength. You're not acting like you are. I like who you are, but God going to turn that around. Are you with me so far? Remember, when God speaks to you, he speaks to you about your identity and your purpose. It will be something beyond your natural ability to accomplish. Beyond your natural ability to accomplish when God speaks to you. Again, it goes back to the scripture of Corinthians. Think about what you was. Think about what you was doing. Think about who you was when God called you. But look at your life today. If you have been a professing believer for any length of time and you can't see nothing different, please understand it's not the church fault and it's definitely not God's fault. Because by now, it should be something different. You should have been made some level of progress in your life. It should be a little bit more better. You, you, especially at this church, the way we teach in the discipleship, my God, you have tools and weapons, my God, that you can use, my God, my God, to forge your way on through. We have given you axes. We have given you hammers. We have given you shovels, my God. Some of y'all told y'all you got to shovel sheep dung for a season, my God. You got to labor, my God, for a season, my God. But you should be always making progress in your life if you are a professing Christian. And if you embrace point number two and understand he turns your weaknesses into strength. And the only way he's going to turn your weakness into strength, you're going to have to surrender. If you continue to try to hold on, to your will, to your plan, to your ways, then you will never understand this scripture, my God, this point at the level that I stand in it and live in it and walk in it. Yeah. 
I said, you will never be able to understand point number two at the level that I live in it and walk in it. My weaknesses has become my strength only because I have yielded to God and have given it to God. What do you have to give to God so that he can use it for you instead of against you? I see you, son. Thank you for always reaching out to me. See what I'm trying to say? God has a word for you. Everything you have asked me about, you just got your word. You feel me? Okay. Again, build up people and change lives. I ain't into hype. I ain't into emotionalism. That don't transform you. Point number three. Let me get out your way. Strategic moments has incredible power. You might see me get a little excited now, Mama Donna. Strategic moments have incredible power. How many of y'all believe that strategic moments have incredible power? Have anybody other than myself ever had a strategic moment in God? Have anybody ever tasted the goodness of the Lord? Have anybody ever seen God turn sorrows into joy? Do anybody know God to be a deliverer? Do anybody know God to be a healer? Do anybody know God to be a way maker? Did God make death be still? Did God make 66 years be still? Did, did you get up and walk away from that car wreck and flip three times, my God? Oh, my God, who am I talking to? Do anybody know, my God, God to be a way maker when it seems like there is no way? Mm. Did God make a way of escape for you when you thought you was about to lose your mind? Oh, did God step in the midst of what you've been through and said, peace, be still, oh, my God. Oh, I'm trying to, uh, uh. oh, my God, do you really know him, my God? Have you tasted the goodness of the Lord? Have you put your marriage back together? Did he save and deliver your children, my God? Oh, my God, did he do a thing? Did he hear your counsel like he have some of y'all? Did he make age be still? Did he make demons be still in your life? Those are strategic moments. When you didn't know how, but it came, it showed up. How can I pay for this? And all of a sudden, somebody sticked in it, and it was just the amount you need to pay your bill. Oh, my God. You didn't know how you was going to feed those kids, but somebody can't. Boy, don't get me started up in this church, man. Is anybody grateful if y'all stand and shout to the Lord? Oh, my God. Mm. Let me give you this right here. This is a note to myself, but I'm going to put this in the atmosphere because all of you have leadership potential in you. All of you are leaders, but check this out right here. People, my God, buy into the leader before they buy into the vision of the leader. People buy into the leader, catch this, before they buy into the vision. Quit trying to get people the vision get to give people you. Good time to tell people your plan and let them know who you really are. Uh, people buy into you before they buy into your vision. So what am I trying to say? That's a level, Minister Hunters. My God, there's a level of, trans, uh, of transparency. If you want people to come join with you, my God, you got to be open and honest. If they got to always try to figure you out, they don't know which way you coming. They don't know if it's real or not real. They, they, uh, it's just too hard trying to walk with him. It's just too hard trying to walk with her, my God. My God, people buy into you before they buy into your vision. That's why you got to be transparent. And when you've been free, when you've allowed God to turn your weakness into strength, you don't mind sharing your former life. You don't mind telling somebody what God has done for you because you ain't got nothing to hide. Oh, because you've been set free and delivered. Oh, my God. So you have strategic moments. My wine presses, I told y'all, was a six by nine sale. Now, let me give you this. An encounter with God is an invitation to covenant. Understand that God is a God of covenant. If you read your scriptures, my God, and read the one in your Bible, especially in the Old Testament, God did not operate outside of covenant when he dealt with the people. God is a covenant God. I preached many years ago, are you on covenant or are you on contract? Contracts can be broken. If I don't want to fulfill the contract, I don't do it. If I don't like it, then I throw it in the trash. But when you're in covenant, you just can't walk away from covenant. Uh, you may try to walk so far, and God going to pull you right back. 
Uh, you may try to shun God, but God going to turn it around for his good. Come on, somebody. And so, my God, and it's a strategic time and a strategic moment will enter you into a covenant. I promise you, if you enter into covenant and not church, your weakness automatically overnight becomes strengths. If you enter into covenant with God and not church, the weaknesses that we all have right now, God will instantly turn it into strengths. He can't mess around with contract. That the addiction, give it to him. Enter to covenant and watch what God do. That mindset that keep telling yourself that you are not qualified, enter into covenant with God and our church and watch what God do. Because many of us think that we in covenant. You know how covenant people operate? They don't quit on God. Contract people will get discouraged and quit. When you're on contract, my God, you'll let somebody, my God, in the church not speak to you and you'll quit serving. I'm going to find me another church to go to. I don't like the way they worship God. I'm going to find a contract. Get offended real easy. Run off and try to find. Everything bothers you. Everything is sticky. Contract people. Covenant people, as I taught y'all, take a lick and keep on ticking. Because when you're in covenant with God, you understand that man didn't save you. God did. When you're in covenant with God, you understand that, my God, your calling didn't come from man, it came from God. And so you understand when you covenant people, you read your Bible, and you understand that Jesus wanted to quit in the flesh, my God. But the Bible, Brenda said he crawled onto Calvary. Come on, because he had you in mind. See, 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 when you're in covenant, you'll crawl to do God's will. When you're in covenant, my God, you'll lose your mind to do God's will when you're in covenant with God. Covenant people operate from a kingdom mindset and not a church mindset. Oh, my God. I said covenant people, my God. And when you're in covenant, I promise you God will turn weaknesses into strengths. And that what is on top of you becomes under you overnight when you enter into a covenant. And then when you enter into a covenant, you become capital L-O-R-D. Lord and Savior. He won't just be Savior. And so when you have strategic moments and strategic timing in God, you enter into a covenant with him. God is the master orchestrator of moments. He packages things in such a precise and optimum way, my God, that you would never think of doing in your own limited ability. He packages, let me read that again. Oh my God, things in such a precise and optimum way that you would never think of doing it in your own. I wouldn't know. Yeah, right. Pastor Champa didn't have to turn out like this. One strategic moment is all it takes to change the course of your life. One strategic moment, one encounter with God's presence, one encounter with God's Shekinah glory. Who, my God, could change the whole course? Let, let me help you. One decision could change the course of your whole life. One strategic moment can change everything about the course of your life. One decision in the presence of the king, one decision in the presence of God's glory, Amber, will change the whole course of your life. Choosing to get connected with the right people that you know that's not going to tolerate you, but that's going to push you, can change the course. <laughs> Getting around people, my God, that's free from the very thing that you're struggling with can change the course of your life. When God brings certain people, especially when they kingdom minded people into your life, God is trying to change the course of your life. That's right. I don't know about y'all, my God, but all of us got some areas that we need God to change. If that's you, raise your hand. Let me hurry up and get to it. One strategic moment, one decision. When you at your lowest point, look up. If you don't know nothing else, do like Peter said, said, Lord, when he was drowning, save me. Lord, I know, my God, I fall short of your glory. Lord, I know, I know, God, but this time, save me. Help me. One decision changed the whole destiny of Juju. One decision at 1.15 in the morning, April the 30th, 1995, Mother Denise changed my whole course. One decision in the midst of suffering, oppression, depression, addiction, lost identity, not knowing who I am. Away from my wife, away from my children. One decision to accept Christ. Oh, my God. Hey, my God. And to stay with Christ. Yeah. Oh, so many of us made decisions, but have you stayed with him? Yeah. Oh, my God. One decision changed the whole course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One strategic moment. Oh, Lord, he got me sitting on this. Can change the very course. Think about the course 
of your life. Is it headed in a direction that you're not pleased with? You have the power. Quit talking about God, I'm waiting. God said, no, 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 make a decision. Uh, you have the power, masterpieces, to change the whole course. God is waiting on you. Quit talking about you waiting on God. That gives you an excuse not to move. That gives you an excuse not to make no decisions. One strategic moment can change the very course of your life and put you on the road to something unique and impacting. Put you on a road to something unique and impacting. Y'all, please understand. Please don't miss what I'm finna say in the spirit. I'm going to repeat it one more time. The Nebo, one strategic moment being affected by the king can change the course of your life and put you on a road to something impacting and unique. Going off of Christ, look around. Walk out those doors and stand in the middle of that parking lot and look. Walk to the other end, going to the south side, and keep on going because you got to go a little more. You got you to come. And look, God has given all that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One decision. Y'all yeah. missing what the Spirit of God is saying. And I'm trying to build you. I'm not trying to boast. One decision, my God, can change the course and put you on, oh, my God, on a road, my God, that would impact your life and millions of others. Yes, yes, One decision. Whoever would have thought a junkie? Mm. Pastor. A junkie, dirty dads. Oh my God. Who my little one? I gotta talk to somebody to understand what God. A junkie. Toy, you a junkie. Oh my God. It's all over YouTube. A junkie. That God would bless. Oh my God. At the level, one decision. One decision. One decision. In the six by nine prison cell, it set my life on a whole nother level. And I give God all of the glory. Ooh. Somebody come on pick me up, man. Y'all pushing me down. I'm trying to go up. Y'all pushing me down. I'm trying to go up, man. I'm trying to go up, man. Y'all pushing me down. Hey! hey. Woo, Jesus. Mm. Let me give you this. Time is at hand. I had to ask myself this question. Transparency again. See, that wasn't in my notes, internet, but God showed me something unique and impacting behind one decision. That's why y'all see my passion go from zero to a thousand and quit. Because see, that, that, that spoke to my spirit. See, because my spirit is alive. See, when your spirit is alive, certain things will speak to you. And you can't do nothing but give God some glory. When you think about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, when you remember, my God, what it could have been, should have been, but God. Huh? Mm. One decision, Pastor Tedrick. Watch this, watch this. Watch this, y'all. I'm going to get you out here. 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 Uh, I had to ask myself this question right here. Listen to me. I had to ask myself this question. To myself, do I leave the comfortable place where I am now and take a risk? Or do I stay here at 3434 and still do ministry? And not be totally fulfilled and obedient to what God has put in my spirit. That's a war that I had before I signed. Do I let people that's around me that should be going up the mountain that still want to be stuck at the bottom keep me from doing what God has called me to do? Because they scared to go to another level because they want to stay stuck in the familiar. See, that was a decision that I had to make to clam up. 
the mountain, contrary to some belief. How are they going to pay for that? It ain't my job. It's my baby told me. That's God's job. Yeah. Oh, my God. You just do what God told you to do. He going to send the people. Don't worry about all that other stuff. Don't let people get you distracted. Do what God told you to do, baby. Oh, Pastor, that's it. That's it. I just hope that you in the one number when he started doing it. Like he's already doing. So I had to ask myself, do I stay where it's familiar? Do I stay where it's comfortable at? I do obey God. See, as I preach to y'all, I preach it to myself. But if my identity, my God, wasn't in God, I probably would have stayed still. I probably would have missed, I probably would have missed this strategic moment to stand here with Billy Joe Darley, Dad Hagen, Joel Osteen Sr., Grace Church, all these great ministries, my multi, mega ministries come up at the church. I would have missed it. My wife said, you'll never get another chance. You'll never get another chance. You'll never get another chance. Trust me. Full of wisdom. Right there. You'll never get another chance. Are you missing your moments? Because you want to stay at the bottom of the mountain. Are you missing your strategic time with God? Because you let fear instead of faith propel you to the next level. I know I'm talking to somebody in this church right now. Because you don't want to make a move. You want to stay familiar, my God, with that. Uh, I thank God for you. Every Christian, if you're willing to trust an untraditional pastor to move to another level. Let me finish. Get you out of here. Is God helping anybody? Okay. okay. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. That was for me, though. Make a decision. Stay frustrated. Stay at a hundred and some people at one o'clock. Or position yourself in faith to go to a whole nother level. I was reminded as I told Brother Derek, my God. Oh, my God. My God, TDJ started off in the storefront church. 30,000 plus. What if he'd have stayed in for me in West Virginia? What if he'd have said, because they said, my God, you know, I'm, he's too fat, he's too black, and he's too loud. That's what they told him. Get up, they kicked him up out of West Virginia. Look at his testimony. Oh, my God, but he was willing to, uh, he said, I'll never let another church tell me what I can't do. So I'm buying everything up in the Texas. <laughs> he said, I ain't, you ain't never better kick me out of my church. I own it all. Ooh, that's kingdom right there. Tell somebody give God a hand, baby. Oh, my God. Let me get y'all out of here. My babies is in the back waiting on the parents. At the pool of Bethsaida, oh my God, at the pool of Bethsaida, the first person who stepped into the stirred up water received a miracle in Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. You need to step into your miracle today. That's what all I did. My God, follow me. I just stepped into my miracle. My God, you need to step into your miracle. This is a principle, my God, of capturing a strategic moment. Stepping in. The pool, of, the many people that are sick. Sick. And every time the water got stirred up, my God, whoever got in got healed. Yeah. That's why I was telling you when the young soldiers over there, my God, the God stirred up the water. My God, those who sat, my God, said it don't take all that. You missed an opportunity for a strategic moment and strategic timing, my God. You can say, I can still get my miracle. Oh, my God, is God around you or is this God in you? Come on, Pastor Chell. Is God around you? Are you around the miracles or are you getting in the miracle? Are you around the miracle or are you getting in the miracle? See, why do you want to be around the miracle? You got to get in the miracle. God is in the miracle. God ain't around the miracle. God is in the miracle. You got to know how to step into the stir of the water. Oh, my God. God is around some of you, but God is trying to get in you. Mm. So everybody that's willing to step into the miracle. See, that was what you call a strategic moment. When God showed up, stirred up the water. And the man that had been invalid, I'm closing, for 38 years. When God said, do you want to get in? Do you want to be made well? He said, every time I get ready to do, to step forward, somebody else beat me to it. I, God didn't ask you that. Why you keep telling God about your problems? Why you keep telling God what you can't do? God stopped by 205 South Sheridan to ask you, do you want to be healed today? Do you want to be delivered today? God didn't ask you, say, was his fault, her fault? It's the pastor's fault, the wife's fault. The, uh, God didn't ask you none of that. My God, do you want to be healed? You got a strategic moment. The water is stirred up. I want to say this as I close. God is blessed going on for Christ. I'm speaking prophetically and biblically with a strategic moment. God has blessed y'all with a campus. As Bishop told us two, two, three months ago, man is also the number, six is also the number of man. God gave us five years to work, build, and lay the foundation. Now it's time for us to go to another level. It's going to take man. 
It's going to take us being open to new leadership, open to new voices, open to new people coming into the ministry. My God, for God to enhance what he has called us to do. I will not let nothing of the familiar cause me to miss strategic moments and strategic timing because you don't want to go to the next level. I'm going higher because God has called me to go higher. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. I'm not staying at the bottom of the mountain. I'm going up the mountain, baby. And if you're going, you better come on and go with me, my God. I promise you, my God, I will not self-sabotage. I would not stay in mediocrity. I would not stay in nothing, my God, that God did not call me to do. The season of living in poverty or mediocrity is over. Another level. Another level. Apostle Paul, in the book of Acts, while you're standing, had a strategic moment. He had a head-on collision, which changed the course of his life. He was a killer. As I taught y'all, he destroyed the people of God. But yet, on his way to Damascus, he had a strategic moment that changed his course. The man of 38 years that was sitting by the pool, when God showed up, he almost, listen to me, y'all, he almost missed his moment with giving God excuses. Because see, when you know him as a healer, as I told y'all, when you have tasted the goodness of the Lord, why are you telling God about your problems? He almost, Stacy, missed his moment. He had been invalid for 38 years. Stuck watching everybody get healed. Watching life like many of you pass you by. Many of us have less days in front of us than we got behind. Are you letting life pass you by because you keep telling yourself out of your old identity that you're not qualified? You keep giving God all of your shortcomings and all of your weaknesses when you should be allowing God to turn your weaknesses into strengths. You have an opportunity to have a strategic moment and a strategic time. Strategic leaders who have the ability to anticipate the future prepare and position themselves for it. Strategic leaders build strategic churches. I believe a healthy growing church like going over Christ is, is a church led by strategic leadership who are following, following their strategic plan and committed to a strategic vision, my God, and we work with a strategic God who calls and equip strategic leaders to do strategic things. That's the word. For the rest of the year, everything has to be strategic. It can't be what you're familiar with. Strategic. Do a word study on strategic. Strategic God. Strategic plan. God is always evolving. God is always doing something new. Are you going to miss your moment? Are you going to miss your chance to be healed? Are you going to miss your chance to get free? The water is stirred. Will you get in it? Or will you self-sabotage and say, well, today ain't my day. When the word of God says, choose this day, choose. One moment, one decision could change the course of your life. But I've already accepted Christ, it ain't done change. That's not God's fault, it's your fault. Because have you allowed God, have you allowed God's word to penetrate your mind? When you accept Christ, your spirit come alive, but your life won't transform, transform until your mind transforms. That's why it's not enough just to confess Christ. You got to believe in Christ. Belief leads to action. Belief will lead to transformation, but make sure your belief is right. The only way you're going to know, you got to open up the book. Quit letting people tell you about all this stuff about the word of God. When the word of God says heaven and earth is going to pass away. And the only thing that's going to make it and escape the fire, Pastor Tedrick, is the word. Think about that. As I told the band of Brothers Thursday, everything going to be burnt up. And the only thing that's going to escape the world being on fire, Alicia, is the word of God. God's word is going to escape the fire, y'all. Think about that. This is the only thing that's going to make it. Right here. This is the only thing that's going to make it. Please. Think about that. Get that revelation. Ooh, Minister Hunter, y'all, the, the, he going to burn it all up. But this don't burn? How is it that this don't burn? Out of everything, Orlando Douglas, this 
won't burn up. Oh my God. Oh, he just dropped it on me last Thursday. I'm like, God, Christian, he's going to burn every. He said, I'm going to destroy the whole world. And the only thing ain't going to make it is this. Now, let me be people. If your daddy died and went on to heaven right now, don't you ever forget what your daddy fits to say. Whatever you do, baby, my God, and if I don't get to see my son, you tell him what I'm supposed to tell you right now. You build your life on nothing but this right here. And I know you ain't going to never forget it. Strategic moment. Strategic time. Do you want your weaknesses today to become strengths and tools in God's hand? Every head bow. If you don't know Christ, I'm not going to beg you. If you want to give your life to Christ, get up out that pew and come on down here to the altar. If you are ready for your strategic moment, if you are ready for your time, come. Come. Anybody who has never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you are here and you feel like you have missed your strategic moment or your strategic time, then come. Stand right here in the front. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you feel like you have missed it, if you have let your weaknesses, my God, call tell you what you can't do, or you disqualifying yourself, then come stand right here. And I know it's many more. And it's many more. Will you miss it? Have the angel came to you in the wine press, but you have hardened your heart. And you tell yourself you got time. You know how many people woke, didn't wake up this morning because they told themselves they had time and they died last today or they died tomorrow? They tell themselves they get it ready when it's another day, but today I can't do it. I'm not ready. I don't want to. My God, is that you? Please don't miss your strategic moment. Please don't miss your strategic time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. One decision to come forth will change the course of your life. One decision will break every addiction that you're struggling with. If you're bold enough, because another part of Gideon's identity is that Gideon became a bold leader. Are you bold enough to get up out your pew and make your way down so that you can be free today? Oh, my God, I'm waiting on you. Bring it up just a little bit, Amber. Bring it up. Look at Amber. She need a thing. Gonna bring it up. Are you bold enough to come? Are you bold enough to come? One decision. Strategic time. Choose this day. Who you gonna serve? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Let the Lord massage your thoughts right now. Because I know it's many more of you that want to come, but you're gonna miss your opportunity. Because I know your story. So I'm willing to wait on you just a little bit. I'm willing to wait on you because I want you free. I don't want you to miss your moment. If you need to be restored back to the Father because you know your life ain't right, you ought to be at the altar. Thank you for the people that's coming. I know I'm in the spirit. You ought to come. God have need of me. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. What is holding you back? What stream, my God? What chain? What shackle, my God, is on you that's keeping you from coming to get what you Save need from God? Life. Oh, my God, is it doubt? Is it unbelief? Are you in fear instead of faith? You ought to be down there too so God can help you with that. Some of us just, my God, it ain't that you in sin. People that come to the altar ain't always in sin. It's, you may be struggling with doubt. You may be struggling with a lack of faith, my God. That don't mean you disqualified. That don't mean you not saved. You just need a little help. Come on. You just need some strength, my God. Come on, I want you free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your results. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the people God responded to your voice. I think that they have bought into the leader. Now they can buy into the vision of the leader. They still coming from everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Those that are down here at the altar, I need you to talk to God before we pray. Because you can't expect for me to do it for you. I don't know your story. You know your story. You know your situation. You have to talk to God. God want to hear you. He don't want to hear me. He want to hear you. So you talk to him. Thank you, Lord. Reset my heart, Lord. Reset my focus, Lord. 
Reset, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's what I'm hearing. Reset me back, Lord. Restore. Restore the joy of my salvation. Give me hope in hopeless situations. Oh, my God. Let God speak to your identity. You're not your mistakes. You're not your failures. You're not your weaknesses. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mr. Prince, I want you to do me a favor and bring your family to the altar. Bring your family as the king, the priest, and the prophet. Walk down here. Thank you, Mr. Sherry. Who my role model when I was a child and still is my role model. Oh my God, thank you. Bring the family. Oh my God. We almost there. We almost there, We almost there, y'all. We almost there. Come on, talk to God. I see many of you up here, but you ain't talking to God. I'm trying to give you a chance to communicate with heaven. I communicate with heaven. You need to learn how to communicate with heaven. Oh my God, tell God to do something with your mind. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Christian, come on to the altar so you can pray for me, man of God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Bring him to the altar and pray for the people of God as I lay out, man of God. Oh, my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. In the power of your and before I release him, please, parents, make sure after this that you make your way to the fellowship hall. And for those that's going to be joining right out the door at the desk. My God, you can sign up to become a member of the church. Oh my God, God bless you. Say in the fullness of your grace, in the fullness of your grace, in the power, in the power of your name. You lift me up. from you, seeking an outpouring from you, and we know that you are not slack to your promise, and you promised that you would meet us right where we are, you promised that you would come near to our affliction, and you promised us that you were married to the backslider, and so Father, we know that even now you are entreating into this room, and you are rescuing those who need you, you're rescuing them from the snares of their lives, you're rescuing them from iniquity. You're rescuing them from transgressions. You're rescuing them from sin. You're rescuing them from burdens and weights. And we lay our burdens before you, Father, and we know that you help us carry all things, that you are the source of all strength and that you are the source of all life. So we lift it up to you right now. We lift every heartache up to you. We lift every weight up to you. Somebody's lifting right now somebody's lifting right now you've been carrying a burden for too long you've been carrying that thing for too long and it's time to let it go 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 that person that hurts you it's time to let you go that person who who hurts you the person who hurts you intentionally and they didn't take care of you and they didn't nurture you like they should have it's time to let that pain go it's time to let that pain go it has held you up too long 
It's held you up far too long. It's time to let that thing go. It's making you sick. It's making you angry. It's making you bitter. It's time to let it go. Break it right now. Break it right now. You have a high priest who cares about your infirmities. It's time to let it go. Break those chains, those things that hurt you, the things that ache you, the things from childhood. Let it go. Your mama didn't know. Your daddy didn't know. It's time to forgive. It's time to forgive. It's time to let that thing go. This is your time. This is your destiny. It's time to walk into the newness, the newness of Christ, the renewed mind. Lift it. Let it go. It's not yours to carry. No how. Let it go. He said that he would carry every word. Wait. He said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Cast it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It's just that simple. It's just that simple of saying, Lord, it's yours. It's not even mine. I lay off all malice. I let go of all, all anger, all hostility. I let go of the fruits of sin. And I pick up the fruits of the Spirit. I pick up the fruits of your joy. I pick up your peace. I pick up your long suffering. You have a life for me. You have a joy for me. You have a peace for me that I can wake up and I can be free from anxiety. I can wake up and I can be free from pain. I can wake up and not worry about my children. I can wake up and not worry about my job. I can wake up and not worry about finances. He's waking you up. He's waking you up. Wake up, joy is here. Wake up, the joy is here. Your weeping has endured for the night. Night time is over, it's time to wake up. 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 Let it go. Receive the fullness of the Father. The embrace of a good Father. A father that cares, a father who knows, a father who sees. He's omniscient and omnipresent. He knows all and he is all. Receive it. Don't struggle on your own any longer. Don't struggle on your own any longer. The, the secrets that you bury, the secrets that you carry, the things that you carry along with you, the things that you're hiding from your spouse, come on. The things that you're hiding from your children, the things that you're hiding from your mother, the things that you're hiding from your, from your job. Come on. He says, I see it and I know it and I love you all the more for it. Wow. Yeah. I loved you before you picked it up. Hallelujah. I loved you before somebody gave it to you. Hallelujah. Come on. There is no perversion too great. There is no sin too heavy. There is no weight too heavy. He says, I'm coming for you. And when I show up, all darkness flees. The enemy has no territory where he reigns. So receive his lordship right now. Lift your hands and receive the lordship of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and receive the lordship of him. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He wants to partner with you. He wants to partner with your life. He has dreams and plans for you and a vision, plans to prosper you, plans to give you peace, plans for your health. Eye has not seen nor ear heard what the Lord has in store for you. That boyfriend won't fulfill you. That girlfriend won't fulfill you. That job won't fulfill you. That opportunity won't fulfill you. He is the fulfillment. He says, present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable response. Father, we give you our bodies today. We give you our bodies, our will, mind, body, soul, spirit, every part of us. You can have it all, Lord. You can have it all. Our children, our legacy, our reputation, we give it over to you. And we pick up what you have for us, which is newness and new life. Woo! <laughs> a new life. It doesn't even matter what happened before. We pick up a new life. We pick up a new life. A new life. A new life. A life full of strength. 
He provided it over 2,000 years ago and now it's your responsibility to receive it. So Father, we receive your life. We receive your blood which renews us, which washes us clean. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, no, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, sing, oh precious. Oh precious yes, Lord. is the flow. Come on, receive it, receive it. We're getting ready to let you go. Come on, receive it. Why Wash our minds. No, Wash away our no sickness. Wash away our weaknesses, Lord. No, we accept blood, our new identity in you, Lord. But the blood of Jesus. Masterpieces, masterpieces, Say, masterpieces. Oh, oh, Thank you, Lord. Precious is the Grab your neighbor's hand. Come on, everybody, grab your neighbor's hand as we close. Oh, my God, touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to do kingdom business today. We receive the washing. We receive the cleansing of the blood. Wash our conscience. Wash our hearts, Lord. We thank you that we are forgiven, Lord. We receive our forgiveness. We are stepping into the water, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we accept our strategic moment and our strategic time. We have come and you have done what you said you would do if we would come. Now, Father God, it's up for us to go back and open up our constitution and begin to believe what the word of God says. It's time for us to possess the blood of and believe our promises, Father God, that you have bestowed upon your body, Lord. I empower these. I release these to go, Father God, in power and in strength. Bless the hands that we hold. Save our souls. Forgive us for our sins. We confess, Father God, that you are Lord and Savior. We bless your holy name. We ask for your traveling mercy and your grace. Father God, I pray that as the parents go to the game time meeting and those that's going to be joining the ministry, Father God, that they're signed up. We now, Father God, give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen.